into the Dads Who Live podcast. I'm Joel Staley with my co-host Tyler Gaeta. You can also check us out if you like these sweet, the sweet apparel that we've been wearing during the podcast. You can also get this stuff at www.dadswholiftapparel.com. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the Dads Who Lift podcast. I'm Joel Staley. And I'm Tyler Gaeta. And today we're going to be talking about... Tyler, you actually posted an interesting article in the Dads Who Lift Facebook group yesterday, and I know it got a lot of traction. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was? I haven't actually read it yet. So uh, this podcast is going to be about mental health. Mental health, depression, something that everybody goes through um, at some point in their life, uh, and exercise and fitness and how it can help you and pull you out of it. So the article basically said, um, the article basically said, there's a there's a university in Virginia that was recommending that you replace prescription medication for mental health or depression with exercise. Um, and it, furthermore, it went into talking about how it, it did go in and say that you can't completely replace it for severe depression, which I agree with. Um, but it said that in mental health facilities, there should be gyms as well and exercise should be part of the routine or the prescription, if you will. And I, I do agree with that. Um, so what are your thoughts with mental health, um, and exercise or, uh, prescription drugs? So I'm the type of guy that I don't even like to take Tylenol or an aspirin if I'm hungover or like cold medicine when I have a cold. I just don't want to medicate myself unless, you know, I'm smoking that ganj sometimes. But (laughs) no, honestly, though, so do I think it can completely replace medication? No. Do I think that it's 100 percent should be the stepping stone before you start getting on medication, especially the more addictive um, I mean, I don't know the names of them off the top of my head, but some of those, some of those psychological antidepressants are just about as hard to come off of as meth is. So yeah, if you're feeling like shit and you haven't tried working out or cleaning up your diet yet, it seems like that would be the obvious choice to take before calling your insurance and trying to get this drug in your system. That's going to be damn near impossible to quit. My whole deal too, is that anybody will be able to tell you that's on drugs. When you're on drugs, your body adapts to those drugs. You always have to increase your doses. Um, so that's the same, as far as I know, that's the same with um, mental health prescriptions and, and depression and anti-anxiety medication and stuff like that is, it'll work in the beginning, um, but your body is going to adapt to it. And then you start getting, so a lot of the articles that I've read will say, well, then you have to up your, your dose and then you start getting more of the side effects then you actually do the uh, benefits. So to me, I went through uh, a big thing of depression. I've I've been through a severe depression. So I talked about it in a a previous uh, podcast number one. Um, And and I'm not going to go back into like what happened. Uh, If you want to know what happened or kind of how I got to this place, you can go look back at podcast number one. But depression is crazy and mental health is crazy and anxiety is crazy. And so I was in this place where I was going through a lot of shit in my life. Um, A lot of stuff was happening in my life. And so I started getting, um, at the time, I didn't know what it was. So I I thought I was sick. I thought I had like a brain tumor or something because I was getting migraines. I was getting tension headaches. I was completely stressed all the time. Um, I actually had it so bad. uh, Depression and anxiety will manifest itself in your body into a physical condition to where like people can actually be physically fit. I'm sorry, physically sick from just being mentally, mentally sick. So it got to the point to where to me, my, uh, I couldn't even see like my eyes would be super sensitive. I had to wear sun. I could see, but my eyes were super sensitive. I had these migraines daily debilitating migraines. When I get migraines, I start seeing, um, 
like blurred vision, double vision. I mean, I literally have to pull over. I can't even drive. Um, so I was getting these migraines daily. I was going to neurologists, getting CAT scans, having MRIs, multiple MRIs done, echo, echocardiograms in my heart, all this stuff because I kept telling people, you don't understand something's wrong. I've never felt like this in my life. I've always been someone that's, that's um, been tough, physically fit, uh, mentally, you know, right. And so it was new to me and I had no clue what it was. And the, the craziest thing, which is why I think this is a great topic to talk about, is the craziest thing is, so this went on for like two years before I figured out that this was really just fucking anxiety and depression. Not one fucking doctor said, hey, bro, I think you just got, I think you're just depressed. Not one fucking doctor. I went to multiple doctors for years, multiple different doctors, specialists, all kinds of shit. And not one of them said, hey, man, I think you're just probably going through some shit in your life. What were they telling you? Uh, I mean, so they... they basically just said they didn't really tell me anything. They basically just, just said, about your "We'll run all these tests and we'll see what happens." And then the test would come back uh, with nothing, and that was pretty much it. So, I did have a doctor at the end. Um, this is kind of this is once I started realizing though what it was. I did have a doctor prescribe me some uh, Lexapro, so I did get on an antidepressant. And um, so during this time too, I want to say that there's like. When you get to this point, and I know a lot of people have been here, are there maybe even now, you're not alone. Um, I felt like I was alone. I, I had crazy thoughts. If I told you about the things I was thinking of, violent thoughts during that time in my life, you would think I was fucking nuts. So how did you, did you start going to the gym or how did you come out? Some well, of that? so hang on. So, I mean, th- there was points where, um, shit, man, there was, there was an area like we're talking severe depression when people get into, I, I never, I never wanted to kill myself. Um, I was never suicidal and, and people do get to that too, but I've never told anybody this in my, in my entire life, but there was a point where when you get into that severe depression where, man, the, the thoughts that were going through my mind, I honestly thought like, fuck, I need to get locked up into a loony bin. And that scared the living fuck out of me. That, that scared me more than anything in my life because I'm a single dad. Um, I'm the only one there for my kid. I'm the only one there can run, that can run my, my business that I had at the time. And I'm sitting there here going, man, if I, if I go in and actually get the help that I need or that I feel like I need, I'm going to lose everything. You know, my kids are going to go away. Um, you know, dad in the loony bin, his, his mom's not in his life, but uh, that would be a chance for her to come back and try to get custody of him or whatever it may be. So I felt stuck. So I just want to tell everybody out there watching um, and the dads who left group, I know a ton of people go through this shit and this is real, real talk. Um, you're not alone. It's, it's normal. And actually, if you look up, th- there's been other podcasts where I hear people talk about it. Having violent thoughts is actually pretty fucking normal. That really doesn't even mean too much. I mean, should you have violent thoughts constantly? No, you know, but having them every once in a while is actually pretty normal. So I was in this place. And so for me... For me, when I was in this place, I thought I was sick. I thought something was going on. It comes to, and and I I say this with a lot of things, but it comes to a lot of mindset. So when I was this fucking depressed and this sick, and and there was times where like, so I had so much pressure in my head from this anxiety. um, I would try going to the gym and there would be days where I couldn't even work out. And I don't even know if you can really even grasp that because now I'm in the gym like every fucking day and I don't, I can't miss a day. You know, I freak out if I miss a day in the gym. Um, but there were, there were days where literally I felt like when I, like I would try to get to the gym every day, but I would get there and there'd be days where I'd be lifting and like the pressure in my, my head was so intense that I felt like I was going to fucking die or have a heart attack and I'd stop lifting and like go home. I mean, I remember when I had my first panic attack, um, I was driving down Dodge street and, uh, Uh, just fuck man felt like my heart was just beating out of my chest and I actually called 911 pulled over to uh, McDonald's because I thought I was dying man I thought I was having a heart attack and this is the worst panic attack I'd ever had in my entire life and uh, the fucking fire rescue truck came I just sat there and like you know did breathing meditations the lady on the phone was like do you have any aspirin I was like yeah she's like take some took some aspirin it was wild man so how do you get out of that? So I, I say that shit just because I want people to know that you're not alone. You're not the only one that, that goes through this stuff. This stuff is real and it happens to a lot of people. Um, they're just too scared to admit it. How do you get out of that shit? So when you are depressed and kind of in that mode, 
negativity feeds negativity, right? And I, I'm a big advocate of what you think you are is what you are. And so when I was going through all those tests, the whole time I thought I was sick. So I was telling myself I'm sick. And when you're telling yourself you're sick, you're going to feel fucking sick. It's, it's only going to feed that depression even more. Um, so really for me, it came to mindset and just realizing that, fuck, maybe this is in my head. Maybe this is just, you know, I'm all this shit I went through in my life built up to this point and I felt fine until that now, but this stuff I'm going through now is like, this is a breaking point, you know? So, um, once I realized that it was depression, uh, and anxiety, um, I was able to kind of take a hold of it or take back control of my life and thoughts. And at the time I didn't know anything about positive aspect, um, or positivity or anything, but I was doing it, but I, without even knowing. So how did you make that switch? So, um, yeah. So like I was saying, it, it's, I got, I went and I went and saw a doctor, a professional, which I recommend everybody doing. Do I, do I think that you can, uh, there's some people that just have a chemical imbalance in their brain and they may need to have medication or be medicated for the rest of their lives. Do I think that exercise can completely cure everything? Absolutely fucking not. Um, there was a lot of guys on the post and the forum and the dads who lift uh, Facebook group. They were freaking out, you know, saying exercise can't cure. That's so dangerous. And so in, in some cases it can't, in some cases I think it can. So for me, I went and saw a doctor. I knew what was going on finally. I was able to talk myself out of things when I started having a panic attack. I could tell myself, listen, man, you're not fucking dying. You've had every test known to man. You're healthy as hell. It's all in your head. So I was able to talk myself out of it. And, you know, a panic attack, attack would last 10 seconds, talking myself out of it down to, you know, maybe a second, you know, so it just periodically gets better. Um, I changed my lifestyle around. Um, so when I was going through all that shit, there was like two years of that point in my life when I felt like that and I was going through those things and uh, I gained a shit little weight. I was unhealthy, um, which kind of comes with depression, right? So I gained like 40 pounds. So I actually, a little bit after coming out of it quite a bit, and, and I, and I want to say too that I, I ran successful companies this whole time. Like you, you wouldn't have known looking outside from the outside in that I was going through all this shit that I was going through. Um, and, and I didn't lose my companies. I didn't fail. I didn't whatever. I, I kept that stuff. It just goes to show that it's hard to tell what someone's really going through. So fucking be nice. So you know? I would like to weigh in. I think it's definitely it. possible for people who are eating somewhat clean, uh, going to the gym, <laughs> exercising to have panic attacks, have mental health issues. So they might need to be medicated, yes, or at least fix, fix another aspect of their life. Maybe if they're not meditating, they can give that a try or just, I don't know, finding a hobby to de-stress a little bit. However, yeah, they're, they're, if you haven't tried exercising and eating right and you're eating like shit and you're not moving at all, then that should definitely be the first step you take before you get on this lifetime commitment or at least this long commitment of medicating yourself and then like you said getting addicted to it and just creating a whole new list of problems that's what i was going to go into i remember now is um so what i had i call that to me a severe depression at that time in my life and so i got on a medication i was medicated um that medication which in the end to me and this is just me but that medication ended up making it worse towards the end but in the beginning the medication helped and it, it, it allowed me to make changes in my life to start getting to the gym every day not feel like i was going to fucking blow up or explode not have super high anxiety um to start eating healthy to start exercising to start turning this lifestyle into a positive healthy lifestyle yeah yeah. Um, so, but what I, what I want to say about that is, and again, if you have a chemical imbalance, uh, maybe you need to be medicated the rest of your life and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. But for a lot of cases, I think that medication can help at first. Um, but I eventually got off it and I've been off any type of uh, medication or, um, anti-anxiety medication or anything for years. And so what ultimately, once I got off that medication, what ultimately, Basically, I look at it as like kept me sane or kept me in it or, or kept me to where I'm at now or got me to where I am now is my healthy lifestyle and my fitness. So can it cure everything? No. Can exercise cure everything? No. But I will say, I guarantee fucking to you, I don't care what you have as far as a chemical imbalance, exercise can help. And it's not going to hurt. No. It Cleaning can up your diet's help. not going to hurt. Nope. 
No, definitely. I 100% agree with you. So I think one of the biggest things you said is ask for help. You know, you're not alone. Absolutely. So how is someone, maybe they just think that they're normal, but they're having these same thoughts. How would you communicate with somebody and say, you know, that's not normal. That's not the mentality you have to have. Maybe you are struggling with some sort of depression or hormonal imbalance. What are some indicators that you found? So I talked, well, so I mean, I, I ended up, ta I talked to people, man. I, I saw it out of professionals. So I had a therapist that I talked to for a couple of years, you know, um, that I talked to like on a started, I think on a, like a weekly basis and then went down to like a monthly basis. But I eventually did, you know, that, that whole, like, I'm going to lose everything. If people know what I'm going through, that's the fear. That's a fear based thought, but it's not reality. Um, so once I actually was able to combat that and I actually, and I think I was already, to me, I was already kind of getting better when I started seeing the therapist, but it was kind of, it was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of shit in everybody's past and everybody's lives that they don't deal with and it can build up and come out at different points in your life. So to me, it was like, hey, I want to figure out where the fuck this is coming from. Not only did I just go through this shitty situation and I was in fight or flight to, you know, save my company and save my life really in my business. Um, but there was also stuff from my childhood that had built up that when you're in those, when you're in that mindset, that depression, that anxiety state, it's easier for other issues to come out. So I've been pretty blessed in that I've never had any, um, mental health issues that I know of. I've had anxiety attacks. I think most people do, um, pretty severe, but in, That's mental health. in general, I'm, I'm pretty low key. I'm pretty okay. I don't know. But uh, I will say this much, <laughs> just having not been to the gym, I just got back from a trip and then a vacation right before that. And just having not been in the gym for 12 days, it's like, if you compare me to when I'm in my routine, I'm working on myself, I'm eating clean, going to the gym, have those that dopamine and those all that stuff bumping. It compared to right now, where I'm trying to get back into it, I just got back like, Two days ago, I got to the gym yesterday, but it takes a while, as we know. Yeah, it's not even comparable. I'm typically like the happiest dude in the world. Can't wait to start the day right now. It's like getting out of bed. It's like, man, I just want to hit the alarm. I want to sleep in. And that's not me. So I know I'm not going to get on any antidepressants, but that's only because I know exactly what the problem is. So someone that's never had that routine or workout or diet ethic then they might just think, oh, this is something I can't control. It's out of my control. I need medication. Where, again, for like the third time, if you haven't tried diet and exercise, that should be the first place you should start. So everything's fucking over-medicated nowadays, right? Every single kid has fucking ADHD. I mean, people are just throwing out these diagnoses. And um, if you have severe depression or severe mental health or mental health issues, uh, I'm not saying there's obviously that out there, right? Um, but I believe that there's also people that get diagnosed with depression that probably don't even really fucking have depression. Uh, maybe they just have a poor lifestyle. Maybe they're fat, they're overweight, they're unhappy with where they're at in their life, but they're not actually clinically fucking depressed. And in that case, change your shit, man. You know, start working out, eat healthy, exercise. Um, it's easier said than done. So I, I want to ask you a question. One of the biggest things that people say when they're depressed is, well, I don't feel good enough. I can't get out of bed to go to the gym. You know, I, I know that the gym would probably help me and it will, but I can't get out of bed to go to the gym. What do you say to them? How do they start? How do, how do they take that first action and get to a place where they can actually get out of the bed and start bettering themselves? Honestly, I don't know if you're going to agree with this, but my take on that would be day one. Commit to getting out of bed or whatever it is. Day two, commit to going to the gym parking lot. Day three, walk in the gym. Maybe like take a piss it, and you got to pee or whatever. Yep. Um, day four, maybe like <clears throat> do one rep of something and then just progress. Because, yeah, you're not going to go from not being able to get out of bed to walking in the gym, feeling great, setting PRs. But just like anything, it's a progression. And then if you take those small, minuscule steps every day, then and focused on progressing, then it's only a matter of time until you are going to the gym, you are putting in work, and then you're feeling better. It's baby steps, man. The biggest thing is that it's not going to happen overnight. So, and, and a lot of people that are in that state and they're depressed and they might have gained weight or whatever it may be, they're depressed and they, they feel shitty about themselves. A lot of people have this fear, like, you know, even the fear of going to the gym will give them even more anxiety. 
you know? And what I say to that is, fuck, start with a walk. So they say, I've read studies, uh, I've actually read a lot of studies on this, and they say that 30 minutes of um, uh, just regular cardio, uh, I I can't think of the term, but low intensity cardio, 30 minutes of low intensity cardio, four times, or no, five times a week can actually physically change your um, mind and change your endorphins and the way that your, your mind works to actually bring you out of depression adds endorphins. Um, so, and, and maybe you can't start with 30 minutes, five days a week of a walk. Um, but get out there and do a fucking five minutes, do a five minute walk, walk down to your mailbox and back. No, you know, I, I that, that, agree. that's a, that's a win. Then build yourself up the next day to, Hey, I'm going to go down the street to the stop sign and back. Then I'm going to go around the block and back. Next thing you know, you're, you're walking 30 minutes. And w- once you get to that 30 minutes a day, I guarantee you, you're going to feel better. You're just going to start feeling good about it. And yourself. then you're going to be like, all right, well, I, I, I got this. Now maybe I can go to the gym. Now maybe I can start lifting. I think that's a hundred percent it. Yep. Guys, this isn't going to be the longest podcast. It's not going to be like the funniest podcast that we ever do, but this is such an important topic because mental health is um, like at its highest peak right now. People are suffering from it and we wouldn't be doing, especially you having been through it and coming out a better man on the other side, we wouldn't be doing our job without using this platform to address it and possibly help a few people out there. Yeah. So I will say that, uh, like I said, man, you're not alone. Um, there's fucking millions of people in this world that are going through the same thing that you are, if not worse. Um, and if I can get out of it, anybody can fucking get out of it. Um, so I'm not on any prescriptions nowadays. Um, I'll have mild anxiety, like maybe really slight anxiety from time to time. I think everybody does when you get overwhelmed. Um, but I by no means have depression, anxiety, or any type of severe mental illness anymore. I'm not on any prescriptions. Um, and it's, to me, it's, it's, it's because of my healthy lifestyle, because of the changes I've made. I've lost 40 pounds um, throughout, you know, these years that I've spent recovering, you know? Um, so now I, I try to eat healthy. I still eat like shit quite a bit. Um, you know, I'm trying not to drink every fucking weekend, uh, which, you know, a lot of guys do. Um, I'm trying to do these things because uh, it goes all the way through, right? Your mental is tied to your physical. So if you feel shitty, if you're fat, overweight, and you feel fat and overweight and sluggish, you're going to have a bad mental image of yourself. If you're healthy, fit, feeling good about who you are physically and able to move physically, you're going to feel better about yourself. And I'll also say, too, that you know, giving yourself... Um, uh, praise yourself for those those small wins, man. A lot of times people are way too hard on themselves. I'm way too hard on myself. I am never happy with myself. I'm always raising goals. Um, I'm always trying to achieve more. I, I always say like, you know, by the time I reach the goal, I don't even know it because the goal already changed. Um, but when you're in this place, you have to take your wins, man. Take take your wins as small as they are. If you, if you walked to the fucking mailbox and you haven't got out and actually walked or done any sort of exercise in months, that's a win. For sure. Feel good about it. Would you mind if people contact you if they do need someone to talk to while they're... No, absolutely. Cool. So, um, yeah, I think that basically wraps it up. If you are having problems with mental health... Let me say one more thing. Yeah, of course. Sorry not to cut you off. But um, I want to say that there's something to be said for me personally about being out in nature. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, not, Not only just getting to the gym and working out, but being out in the fucking wilderness and the trees, uh, by a lake, by a body of water, the ocean. Um, I know that there's studies out there that that shit actually helps your body release endorphins, um, which make you happy um, and actually can can improve your mental health and improve your depression and pull you out of that stuff. So in the summertime, that's why I love to. You know, and, and anybody can get down. No one's ever, like I've said in a bunch of podcasts now, life's a fucking roller coaster. You know, you're not always going to be up top feeling great. Everyone's going to feel low at some point in their life. And um, that's why a lot of times all my cardio that I do in the summertime, right now we're here in Nebraska, it's winter time, so it's like fucking 10 degrees outside. Actually, today I don't think it's that bad, but most of the time it's really fucking cold. Um, but in the summertime, I love to go to the lake. I, I love to go to Zerinsky Lake. It's got a bike trail around it, like an eight mile bike trail. And I will ride that fucker probably like eight to 16 miles daily. Yeah. And just being outside in the nature. Every time I go to Colorado, Give everybody, some fresh air. everybody in Colorado, shout out. I love Colorado. But every time I go to Colorado, 
I'll, I'll just be driving in the morning, man, like driving to the gym. I was just recently up there and I, I wake up, nothing really is important going on. I'm just driving to the gym and I'm just sitting there like in gratitude, like, man, I feel fucking good. And, and it's, it's just being out in nature, the mountains, the trees, the fresh air. Um, it's a good way to clear your mind and pull you out of shit. Definitely. Tyler, thanks for sharing that, man. I know yeah. that's uh, you're going to help a lot of people with that message. So, guys, if you liked this message and you like this podcast, we really need your support. Uh, please give us a, a five-star review and subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or SoundCloud. Yeah, and definitely tell other dads who lift or dads who want to get into lifting or maybe even someone that could benefit from lifting from the mental aspects. Tell them about the podcast. We talk about a lot of cool, but a lot of real stuff, too. And we'll dive back into this too, guys. If you love this episode, whenever it airs, uh, if you have more questions, throw it on there and we'll we'll turn that into another topic and talk about it, about it some more. So um, thanks for checking in with us. Uh, everybody have a good day. Listen, there's no way to be the best version of yourself if you're not raising the bar. Raising the bar isn't just about doing the things you're supposed to be doing. It's about doing those things that no one expects you to do and doing them perfectly. Thanks for listening, guys. If you love this podcast and you are a dad who lifts, check out our Facebook group, Dads Who Lifts, and join. You can also catch this podcast on SoundCloud, YouTube, www.dadswholiftapparel.com. We also have a Dads Who Lift Apparel Facebook page. Make sure that you know why, because this is forever.